Complexity is the enemy of security. A recent Gartner survey found that by the end of the year 2022, 92% of organizations are going to look to consolidate the number of security vendors they have in the environment. So I think we can all agree that every CISO and every enterprise wants to consolidate security. But the question is, how? There's very little practical guidance on offer in the industry that provides recommendations and a step-by-step -step process for organizations to start consolidating their security vendors, which is why I love Gartner's SASE or Secure Access Service Edge Framework. And why I love it is because it has this practical guidance on offer for organizations as they go on this network and security transformation journey, and which is why the title of this show is The SASE Show. And that's why we're doing an episode today on a very exciting new report that Gartner has just put out called the Market Guide for Single Vendor SASE. If you want access to this report, there's going to be a link. The report is flashing up on your screen right now. So you can go and download this report and draw your own conclusions about what that means for your business. So welcome to another episode of The SASE Show. I'm your host, Siddharth Deshpande, and I'm also your guest today because I'm so passionate about this topic, I thought I would interview myself. Before we get into the report and highlighting a couple of key points in the report, let's take a step back and look at how we got here. So in the past, let's say pre-2019, a lot of organizations, a majority of organizations had different technologies for security and for connectivity. On the security side, they had proxies for internet access security. They had VPNs or software defined perimeters for access to private applications and they might have had a CASB for securing their SaaS applications. While on the networking side, they had MPLS or leased lines for connectivity back to the data centers and all the traffic was being, majority of the traffic anyway, was being backhauled to their corporate data centers for security inspection through those private connectivity links to send the traffic back out to the internet. In 2019, Gartner identified a trend called Secure Access Service Edge which was basically a solution to the problem. And the problem was that if applications are increasingly in the cloud and users are increasingly outside of the corporate office, what sense does it then make to backhaul all your traffic to your enterprise environment and then send it back out again? That leads to performance issues, that leads to security and scalability challenges. So this secure access service edge framework was intended to give organizations guidance on bringing some of these components together. In the first generation of SASE, this is my term, by the way, this is my categorization. Uh, this is the, how I look at it. In the first generation of SASE, uh, all of these security capabilities, like your uh, internet bound security and your private application security, all these were consolidated into security services edge. And on the networking side, what was happening was that all those private connectivity links like lease line and MPLS, organizations were increasingly trading them for application aware SD-WAN architectures. But over the last three years, these two have largely remained separate initiatives and in organizations. With this new report, which is the market guide for single vendor SASE, to me, this marks the second generation or the next generation of the evolution of the SASE market. What Gartner is now saying, is that it is a very viable and credible option to bring the security consolidation and the networking consolidation together and deliver that capability as a single management console with a unified data lake and with a unified data model, lots of integrations between the components to basically make the job of the security and networking teams much easier on a day-to-day -day basis. And this can have lots of great business impacts, positive business impacts as organizations start embracing hybrid workforce and cloud adoption. So as I mentioned earlier, this market guide for single vendor SASE is available for download and you, you'll have the link available as part of this video podcast. But I want to highlight two key things in the report before I give you my take on it. One of the key findings that Gartner has highlighted is that multiple vendors for single vendor SASE exist but very few of them actually have the required depth and breadth of functionality and integration across the various components, you know, things like a unified management plane and unified data lake and a unified data model. 
the other key strategic planning assumption that to me Gartner has identified is that by 2025, 80% of enterprises or 80% of organizations are going to look to unify cloud services, private applications and internet access uh, using SASE or SSE architectures up from just 20% in 2021. So to me, this means that the trend of converging the networking and security capabilities is mainstream and there are credible options available in the market for organizations that really want to move in this direction. How about if we look at some of the business impacts that single vendor SASE can offer you as an organization in terms of benefits. So let's look at a few use cases. Imagine that in your organization you have multiple branches, hundreds of branches or tens of branches perhaps, and you want to operate in an environment where you operate in a thin branch model concept, where when a new branch comes up, you don't have to configure heavy firewall appliances or heavy proxy appliances at those remote sites. You just want to ship a pre-configured SD-WAN appliance, which is a, a smart intelligent device that reaches your branch location. It doesn't require a super skilled engineer to configure. It just needs to be plugged into the internet. And when it's plugged in through zero touch provisioning, the branch is onboarded, all the application awareness in the SD-WAN, all the application aware telemetry is switched on and it's already secured using the cloud-based security component of the single vendor SASE architecture. If you want to operate in this, this sort of a reality, single vendor SASE can help. Or just imagine if you're in a situation where you have different management consoles for the security components of your SASE architecture today. Let's say you have different management consoles for private application access and for internet bound security through your proxy. You want to be able to consolidate that and have a single management console. You want to also make sure that you're not operating in an environment where even though you have an agent for your internet bound security, you still have got your VPN agent, your legacy VPN agent still running to support both your private app and your internet, internet security use cases. In addition to that, you also want to be in a situation where your SD-WAN management console is not, this, is not different from your security console. So you want to be able to integrate those two together. If you want to operate in this simplified reality, single vendor SASE can help. Or imagine a situation where you have calls coming in from your employees and your business leaders and your users saying, hey, I can't access this particular application. I don't know what's wrong and I need you to fix it because I think it's the network. You want to be able to figure out from a remote site to a particular application for a group of users, what are the challenges that they're facing? Is it a problem with the local ISP? Is it a problem with the application is itself? Is it a problem with the user's device? If you want to solve these problems, single vendor SASE can help. Or imagine a situation where you're a geographically distributed organization you have lots of different group companies in the overall umbrella of your, of your conglomerate. Or you have lots of different business units that you want to provide cloud delivered security and connectivity to. So you want to provision your SASE services in a converged way centrally. But at the same time, you want to be able to delegate management of the individual security policies to your various group companies. So the concept of multi-tenancy but centralized provisioning if you want to operate in that reality, single vendor SASE can help. Or imagine a situation where you're in a regulated industry and you want to make sure that the data plane that is processing your security traffic, where your SSL decryption is happening and where all your security policies are being deployed, that data plane is isolated for your organization and it's not shared with other companies. You want to make sure that the egress IPs that your service is giving you are dedicated to your organization, not shared with other companies. And you want to be able to use this dedicated isolated data plane to be able to, let's say, whitelist access to your SaaS application so that uh, your SaaS applications can only be accessed from trusted uh, locations where security inspection has already been conducted. So an attacker that compromises a user's credentials 
and then tries to log in from a different location will just be dropped, the traffic will just be dropped. If you want that kind of a reality, single vendor SASE can help. But of course, life is not a bed of roses. So there will always be challenges and barriers to adoption. And as security practitioners, we have to be cognizant of what these barriers are and how we can overcome them. So let's look at two or three areas that I've seen that have come up in conversations uh, around barriers to adoption. And this is something that Gartner has referenced in the report in, in their own way as well. I think the first is uh, product alignment, right? If you look at SD-WAN and security services, uh, in many organizations, these two capabilities have had their own procurement cycles. So maybe today you have a requirement for consolidating the security services, but you already have an SD-WAN contract in play that has a couple of years left, right? So you may not want to rip out what you have uh, from an SD-WAN perspective, but you might still want to go with the security services consolidation. That's one of the potential challenges. And I think that's totally fair, right? SASE is a journey and it's all about selecting the architecture that will help you keep pace with the direction the industry is headed in. So you may well choose just the security portion for consolidation, but the architecture or the vendors you select should support both your current environments in terms of the existing networking capabilities you have, as well as support your plans for a future consolidation. The second barrier I want to highlight is organizational dynamics. Traditionally, networking and security have been two different groups and they operate uh, with their own key initiatives, they operate with their own KPIs and they don't necessarily always have had common objectives in the past. But I think that worked in a world where, uh, where the data center was the center of the universe. But now it's all about integration, it's all about converging security and networking and delivering security services closer to the user and the application. So it takes time for change to happen and it often requires uh, leadership uh, from the CIO or the CISO to actually drive home that point of internal alignment and creating unified capabilities where the networking and security teams have a common shared view of what the application environment looks like. So I hope by now most of you agree with me that single vendor SASE is a trend that's here to stay and it has a lot of business benefits to offer organizations. So what would be some key practical takeaways we can all leave this discussion with? In my view, I think SASE is a journey. It's not a product. So I like to break it up into three phases, right? The first phase is about addressing what is important today. So if you have a, a proxy replacement project or a VPN replacement project, or if you want to get off your legacy MPLS architecture, start there, right? But while you're starting there, select an architectural approach that allows you to move to phase two, which is increased integrations. The ability to be able to turn on new use cases for networking and security without making a lot of changes to the architecture. So that's phase two is the integrations and that can only happen if you select the correct architecture in phase one. And the third phase is typically starting to measure business metrics and deliver a lot of business value for your organization in terms of reporting application level information to the board around how your apps are performing, what business impact it's having in terms of revenue and what is your security posture, all of that in one console. It's also important to evaluate what new projects you have going on. Do you have an upcoming merger and acquisition coming up? Or do you have a project to have a bunch of new sites onboarded to a thin branch model? If you have those kinds of projects, it's useful to pilot test the single vendor SASE project right at the outset to start seeing the difference between that and your current approach. It's also important to start looking at some key architectural principles as you're evaluating your SASE vendors. Do your SASE vendors offer you both options, the ability to integrate their security stack with other SD-WAN platforms as well as native integration with their own SD-WAN platforms. If that's the case, that allows you to move from phase one to phase two to phase three in a seamless and effective way. Do they have a unified management console for SD-WAN and security? Do they have the ability, uh, for example, to offer unified application identification 
at the branch and in the in the in the in your security stack do you have the ability to have a unified data lake and a unified data model i think these are all important questions to evaluate as part of uh, the decision making process as an organization is going towards single vendor sasi to conclude i would just like to say that sasi means different things to different organizations it's important for you to contextualize sasi in your environment gartner has published this brand new research that to me marks the evolution of the sasi market into the next phase which is very strategic i've given you my take on it but please do download this report there'll be a link to the report to download this in the description of this video and perhaps in the comment section we'll see how that goes download this report contextualize it to your environment draw your own conclusions and if you would like to continue the conversation i'm happy to chat offline and a lot of my colleagues are as well so there'll be a qr code that's that pops up on your screen right now feel free to click that and uh, we can actually set up some time to talk or if you just want to connect with me or my peers on linkedin please feel free to do that as well so that was this episode of the sassy show with sid i'm your host siddharth deshpande and i hope you enjoyed this session i'm looking forward to the next episode of the sassy show with you thank you